another episode of Regional Italian Cuisine. My name is Caterina Borsato and I'm madly excited about uh, tonight's program because of course we're going to that wonderful region in northern Italy, Il Veneto, which of course uh, is where my family hails from. And I would like to welcome our guests on this evening's show, Nicola. Hi, Caterina. Benvenuto. Yeah. And his beautiful partner, Caterina. Mm. Thank all those beautiful tangles they drive me crazy. <laughs> Welcome. Now, of course, they have come here on a bit of a study uh, tour here of Australia. And what better thing than for us to take advantage of this and get what's in that little head? Because you know what? <laughs> These are recipes that we're going to be showcasing tonight that you can't find in the books. And there's little knickknacks that we look for. Now, let me just tell you that uh, Nicola and Caterina both come from Padova, which is the way we say it in Italy. Uh, but in English, they say Padua. Vero. Yeah, yeah. P-A-D-U-A. Just sort of takes away a bit of the romanticism. Um, it, is in the, it is one of the seven uh, provinces in the Veneto region. And just to give you an idea, we're probably about 15, 20 minutes from Venezia. Oh, yeah. Something like that. Uh, inland. Uh, to the northwest, we have Vicenza, of course. To the uh, north um, east, it's uh, Treviso. Uh, which is uh, very famous for the radicchio, radici, as they say. And then when we go more to the west, we've got Verona, that wonderfully romantic city of Romeo and Juliet, oh, yeah. and Lago di Garda. So just to give you an idea where we are, and talking about that, I guess we have sea, we have lagoons, and we have a lot of low plains, and we have, of oh, course, yeah. the famous hills, Uganigi. Is that how you say it? Yeah, it's uh, Euganigi. Euganigi. It's a hard word, that. Uh, and uh, so just to give you, because the scape really does, um, I guess, uh, uh, govern what sort of foods are go uh, basically grown there. Okay, for this recipe, it's a recipe that I create with my experience in Italy. I use all Italian ingredients like tomatoes, ricotta cheese, basil. Okay, for first we are going to do some roast tomatoes. We need to cut the skin like a cross. And then we need to blanch for a couple of seconds and cool down really, really quickly. Now we need to blanch these tomatoes a few seconds and cool down really quickly. And we do this for to take off the skin easier. We need to cool down quickly for don't cook the tomatoes. Now we are taking off and put in cold water for cold down quicker as possible. The best way is using ice and cold water together for yeah, for cool down quicker as possible. Okay, now we need to peel the tomatoes. You can see that the skin come off really easy, but the tomato is still hard and not cook. Okay, we need a little bit of olive oil here. Okay, we put the skin of the tomatoes on the tray. And now we are going to cut and clean the tomatoes. We cut quarter and then clean all the seed now we're dressing up a little bit then we need salt, a little bit of pepper, a touch of sugar for the acidity, oregano, and another touch of olive oil. And we don't dress up the skin, 
because we need to make crispy in the oven and maybe just can you see a little bit of olive oil that's it because we need to dry in the oven and make crispy and we are going to use like a garnish for the plate okay what we are doing now is cook this tomato in the oven we need to cook really slow around 100 degrees for roughly an hour and obviously the skin needs less time then we need to check and maybe take it off the skin a little bit before than an hour and then finish to cook the tomato okay now we put in the oven and in the meantime we are going to finish the rest of the dish next step is the ricotta cream that we are going to take a piece of ricotta we chop it up a little bit okay then now we put the ricotta on in the pan okay then we go main with a little bit of milk a little bit of parmesan another little touch of milk then a little bit of salt and a touch of sugar that's it okay now ricotta is ready but need to be mixed a little bit then Okay, now it's ready and now we have something really creamy. Okay, last job, prawns. We need to clean up, take it off the tail, blanch for, I don't know, 10-15 seconds and that's it. Dress up and finish the dish. Okay, then clean up the prawns. So you can ask of your fish shop to have prawn already clean. You need just to take off the tail. It's a really easy job. Just go here. Okay, for our recipe, we need five. Five prawns here. Five prawns. I reckon it's enough for one portion. It's a rich dish. We have ricotta, parmesan. We are going to blend for maybe 15 seconds and then dress up and finish the dish okay so we have boiling salt water and we just drop in the prawn 10-15 minutes second is enough I like don't cook too much and leave a little bit raw inside Okay, now our tomatoes is ready. We can take it and use for finish our tomatoes here. We are going to dress up the prawn with tomatoes, a little bit of pepper, oregano, some of basil. Just break with your hand like this. Olive oil. Mix all together. Now we have our ricotta here. And 
and then we are going to use our the peel of the tomatoes our basil and finish with our olive oil okay now we are here with our dish this is gamber del pomodoro con crema di ricotta should be an entree or a main course